In this video, we will show how to inject a malicious Modbus command. If they're not already running, go ahead and start up all the VMs except the workstation. Go to the Kali VM and log in. For convenience, I suggest increasing the screen size by going to View, Virtual Screen 1, Resize to 1600 by 900 or whatever is the best for your monitor size. I can't guarantee this option will be available or work correctly as it depends on your computer's graphics card. There's one more piece of setup we need to do on this Kali VM before we can continue with the exercise. We need to add a route to the .95 subnet so that we can send a Modbus packet to the PLC, which is on that subnet. Click on the Kali icon in the top left and click Settings and then Advanced Network Configuration. Double click on Wired Connection 1. Go to IPv4 Settings. Change the method to Manual. Click Add next to the addresses. Type 192.168.90.114 for the address and 255.255.255.0 for the net mask. Click on Routes. Click Add and then type 192.168.95.0 for the address and 255.255.255.0 for the net mask and then 192.168.90.100 for the gateway. That's the address of the PFSense firewall that we're using for the gateway. Click Save. You should now be able to close the network settings and open a terminal, and you should be able to successfully ping 192.168.95.2, which is the IP address of the PLC. Before we do anything else, let's go to the visualization to make sure the simulated plant is running as we expect. So in a browser on your host machine, go to 192.168.95.10. And after a while, the visualization should load on that page, and you should be able to see the chemical plant operating normally. In the last video, we learned how to sniff traffic with Wireshark. So let's open Wireshark again and take a closer look at that traffic. After you've opened Wireshark, double-click on the ETH0 interface. And then in the filter field, type Modbus and hit enter. This should filter out all traffic except for Modbus traffic and make it easier for us to determine what's going on. After a little while, click the red stop button in the top left, and that will also make it easier for us to examine the traffic. You will see some packets that are reading input registers. You can expand the Modbus section to see the data values that are being sent. Uh, it's hard to tell too much at first glance from these values, so let's look at something else. There are also many packets that are reading coils. Coils are pretty much the same as registers, but they're for binary data only, either an on or an off signal. You'll see that all these coil reads are for the address 40, and that the value of that coil is always zero. So let's see what happens if we send the opposite value, a one, instead. There are many ways to craft and send a Modbus packet. For this video, we'll be using a software called Metasploit, which is kind of overkill for these purposes, to be honest, but it's also a good utility to know how to use in general. It comes installed by default on Kali. Open up a terminal and start Metasploit by entering the command MSF console. Metasploit is split up into modules. Type search Modbus to search for modules with Modbus in the name. There will be several results, but we want the one called Modbus client. Type use auxiliary slash scanner slash scada slash modbus client, and you can use tab to autocomplete some of these. Hit enter, and we'll now be using the modbus client module. Now that we're using the module, there's some options that we have to set. Type show options to see information about this module's options. First, set the destination IP by typing set rhost 192.168.95.2 which is the IP address of the PLC. Type set action write underscore coils to let the module know that we want to write a coil. Type set data underscore address 40. Type set number 1. And lastly, type set data underscore coils 1. So now we will be sending the value 1 to the data address 40 using Modbus to the host 192.168.95.2.
So now all we have to do is type run and our Modbus packet will be sent to the PLC. Now go back to your browser and look at the visualization to check out what's happening. The A and B tank valve should now be set to zero and the main tank pressure should be steadily dropping. It looks like that coil that we found being used at address 40 is used to signify whether the plant should be running or stopped. We were able to use malicious Modbus injection to send a stop signal to the plant unexpectedly. In the next video, we'll try to do one better, and instead of just shutting off the plant, we'll try to make it explode.